Good morning, everyone. This is Daniele Capezzone, a view from Italy, the watcher Pulse from the Utopia Studios in Rome. And it is an honor and a pleasure for us to have with us the Belgian ambassador to Italy, His Excellency Pierre Emmanuel de Beau. Good morning, and thank you for being with us. And Belgium, as you know, is a country which is at the heart of the EU. Uh, on the one hand, from a geographical point of view, at the center of Europe, and on the other end, because it hosts the major uh, European institutions. But the, the, this is not the reason why we have here the ambassador. There is a good piece of news. Next week, early December, from the 1st to the 3rd of December, between Rome and Milan, there is going to be the first post-pandemic state visit of the uh, king and queen of the Belgians, of the uh, 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 Belgian royal family. They will be in Italy. Uh, thank you, dear ambassador. Why are they going to be here? Well, they're going to be here because Italy and Belgium are close friends, Daniele. Uh, they've been old friends for a very long time. It was illustrated recently by the fantastic gesture of Italy to help uh, the people in Belgium after the floodings in uh, this summer. Uh, the visit is there also to recognize the sufferings and the efforts made by the Italian people during the pandemic. We are actually, we admire the way uh, Italy uh, is getting out of this crisis. And the third and most important reason is that among friends, we can work together for the recovery. And we want to stress that in institutional contexts, economic and commercial contexts, but also with the cultural and academic uh, sectors. Thank you. Uh, can you tell us something about the schedule of this visit? They are going to see the President of the Republic, the Prime Minister, the speakers of both of the Houses of the Parliament. What else? Yeah, well, that, that's the institutional part of the visit. Uh, to make it complete, uh, I can add the Mayor of Rome, the Mayor of Milan, and the, the President of the region of Lombardia. Uh, very important to have this institutional uh, contact. But then we have also... Um, economic and commercial context and a full day of the visit in Milan is devoted to these cultural uh, economic activities with seminars bringing together Italian and Belgian business people, a high level uh, business lunch presided over by the king and a meeting at the Triennale in Milano uh, between the queen and Belgian and um, Italian designers. There's also an important academic um, aspect to the visit, with also a big seminar involving Belgian and Italian universities, and a cultural aspect, uh, not to forget, uh, the king and queen will visit the ballet school of La Scala in Milan, and they will offer President Mattarella uh, a dance performance in Rome um, of uh, famous uh, Belgian ballet company Rosas. Okay. Uh, later in the, problem, in the program, we will be talking about the economic part of the visit. Yeah. Uh, but uh, if I might, can you tell us something about the role of the monarchy according to the Belgian uh, constitution, according to the Belgian uh, constitutional <coughs> architecture? Yes, certainly. The king is our head of state. By the way, uh, you know that uh, our, our king's mother is Italian, is of Italian origin. So that's also very important in the ties between Belgium and Italy. Uh, but the king is the head of state. He represents the country. And Belgium is a diverse country with uh, three regions and um, cultural communities. The king represents the whole. So he is at the same time Flemish, Walloon, and, and, and from Brussels, if you want. Uh, but it's very important because he has a uh, <clears throat> um, unity function in Belgium. He represents the country as a whole uh, and he also has an important role in, um, in terms of uh, uh, forming the government after the election. Uh, I would compare it a little bit to the role of the President of the Republic in Italy. Very important to represent people in Belgium identify with the monarchy. Thank you, sir. Uh, what's the current state of the pandemic crisis in your country now? 
Well, as you know, you've seen like I have uh, the recent uh, European color map uh, related to the, to the pandemic. And I have to say that uh, most countries color in red these times, with uh, the exception of Italy, by the way, uh, which, is, which is good. So far. <laughs> yes, so let's hope that it will remain so. But so Belgium uh, is certainly uh, not an exception. Uh, this being said, all the efforts are being done. Um, during the, the, the first goals of the pandemic, there was a great deal of solidarity between Belgium and Italy. Hospitals in Belgium helping hospitals in Italy during the first uh, and, and, and most uh, difficult lockdown, for instance. Uh, but also a lot of solidarity among families because so many Italians have family in Belgium. 300,000 Italians living in Belgium. It's the second biggest uh, foreign community living in Belgium. And so uh, I know that uh, we received also a great deal of solidarity from uh, our Italian friends. Uh, so let's switch on that. Can you tell us something about the Belgian community in Italy? How much are they? Well, they're officially uh, they about 9,000 uh, registered. Uh, we suspect that there are many more than that because registration with the consulate is not mandatory. Uh, those Belgians are working in all sorts of sectors. Um, the, there are more Belgians, about 4,000 in the north of Italy, where uh, the business community is more concentrated as far as Belgian companies are concerned. But there are also uh, a lot of people in the south and in the central part of Italy. And they work in many, many sectors. Uh, I have a good example, uh, a fellow Belgian who uh, in the meantime has become Italian as well. Uh, he was a university teacher in, Na in Napoli uh, and he became cultural counselor of two Italian presidents, of President Ciampi and President Napol Napolitano. So in the cultural sector, uh, there are many, many Belgians working here. Uh, being in uh, archaeology, linguistics, uh, history, uh, or science. Um, and so it's a very varied and open community. I have to say it's also a community where you have many mixed marriages, yes, which, is, which is fantastic because that's the richness and the diversity of all cultures. Yeah. And you were, a couple of minutes ago, you were hinting at the Italian community in Belgium. Can you tell us something about that? Uh, out of the uh, EU bubble, of course. Yes, well, out of the EU bubble, it's very easy because um, Italian migration to Belgium goes back as far as the Renaissance. Um, and uh, we had also a lot of Belgians coming to Italy at the time, artists, um, uh, bankers, uh, uh, merchants, and so on. Uh, but then, of course, it's after the Second World War uh, that there was the, the most recent big uh, migration wave from Italy to Belgium. And the, um, uh, those families, their sons and their grandsons, have incredibly well integrated. And they brought us uh, uh, a lot of, of, of uh, new elements in our Belgian culture that are now fully, fully integrated. We even had, uh, have prominent politicians who are from Italian origin, and you can find Italians in Belgium in all parts of the country. Really, they're not concentrated in just Brussels, say, where you have the EU bubble you mentioned. No, they're everywhere in the, 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 the remotest parts of Belgium. There is a piece of Italy. And if I might, no one is listening to us from Brussels. How do you feel the EU bubble as an asset, as a liability, as a country, of course? That's an interesting question. That's a good <laughs> point. Uh, asset and liability. Um, it's certainly a liability because you have, as a host nation uh, for international organizations, you have to deliver. You have to deliver the facilities, the working conditions, the environment, uh, and the services, and we try to do our best for that. But it's an incredible asset because you mentioned, uh, Daniele, that um, uh, Belgium is ge geographically small, that's right, but being host to the EU, NATO, and other international organizations gives us um, 
uh, well, a good sense of how the world um, is evolving, is developing, uh, and gives us maybe uh, an angle to, to, to have a sort of influence or to, to, to be a good partner and uh, to, to be good in dialogue and bringing people together. That's what we do constantly. Um, so uh, for us, it's a richness. And then uh, economically, it's an asset as well, because with all these delegations coming to Brussels in normal times, uh, yes, of out of the pandemic, of course, uh, but it's being said, it's, it's, it's positive and it brings us even more diversity. Belgium has always been a diverse country. Through the ages, we've been a passage point for many, many other countries and other uh, cultures. Well, today we are an open country, host to international organizations, and, and we try to uh, have all our people benefit from it. Last part of our conversation, uh, let's move to the economy. Uh, what's the current state of the trade relations between Belgium and Italy? Can you tell us something about that? Yes, it's uh, actually, um, Italy is one of our main trade partners. It's our uh, sixth or seventh export market. And we import a lot from Italy, for which Belgium is also the sixth or seventh uh, export market. Or the flow of trade between our two countries is close to 40 billion a year, which is considerable. Uh, it's mainly in the chemical and pharmaceutical sector, but it's really expanding in other directions. For and example, the aim is now, with um, the, the recovery in Europe, to focus on uh, green technologies, uh, the environmental transformation, and on digital transition as well. And in, in these sectors, I think that uh, uh, with, with the, Ital the Italian economy being so strong, member of the G7, don't, don't forget it, uh, we, we have a lot of assets to work together in the recovery and to become sort of a, an innovation hub uh, in, in all these areas and also in, in biotechnologies, for instance, uh, there's a lot of uh, innovation in, our, in both our countries. Um, here in Italy, the universities and research centers are incredibly dynamic. It's the same in Belgium. Let's work together even closer and we can be the drive for the European recovery. Please leave our listeners with a piece of news. Someone says uh, there is a piece of news coming that there might be some Belgian investment in the energy sector in Italy. It might be true? It might be true. It might be true because uh, we have developed in Belgium uh, a strong know-how in renewable energies uh, like uh, solar energy, wind energy, and so on. Uh, and I expect uh, this area to be... Um, uh, to be the focus of, uh, of, of, of investments in the next few months. Thank you. Let me thank once again uh, His Excellency uh, Belgian Ambassador to Italy, Pierre Emmanuel de Beau. Our time is over for today, but next week there is going to be this important state visit, so stay tuned and see you next Friday with a view from Italy. Have a nice weekend.